good morning everyone so today we are going to start our first chapter the system of linear equations we are going to cover the following topics in this chapter so let's begin with introduction to system of linear equations so first the question is why do we study system of equations there are two main reasons are the first is we can model some of the problems mathematically using the system of equations and that gives us the answer to those problems but the more important reason is that to simplify the problems which are related to a more advanced topic of this course vector spaces and this is the main reason for us in this course to study to study this chapter so consider an example let's say there is a 50 marks exam and 13 questions are given true false questions of 2 marks and mcq questions are of 5 marks how many true false questions are there so to answer it we need to model it using the system of equation so we call let's say true false question there are x true false questions and y mcq questions so the first equation is x plus y is equal to 13 because 13 questions are there and the next equation comes from the total marks and if you solve them <clears throat> then you will get x is equal to 5 which means the number of true false type questions are 5. So let's try to solve the following three systems and see what they geometrically represent. So in the first system, the blue line represents the line 5x plus y is equal to 3 and it represents 2x minus y is equal to 4. When I draw these two equations on a 2D plane, then we can see that they are intersecting at a point 1 comma minus 2. It means this 1 comma minus 2 is giving me the solution of the system of equation. So graphically the solution 1, min 1 comma minus 2 corresponds to the solution of a system of equation which can easily be computed numerically. If I add these two equations it gives me 7x is equal to 7 that gives me x is equal to 1. Substituting the value of x in any one of the equation gives me y is equal to minus 2. And one more observation is they are intersecting only at one point which mean the solution is unique. In this system we are getting two parallel lines which means that these two lines are nowhere intersecting and that's why the system do not have any solution. If I consider this system, then both the lines are representing the same, <coughs> same line and therefore I can say that each point which lies on this line is satisfying the system. They are in finitely many points and therefore this system has infinitely many solutions. So we have seen three cases, unique solution no solution and infinitely many solution. In case of the infinitely many solution, it is also interesting to write the solution set. So if I see here, then from the first equation, I can compute y is equal to 4x minus 1. So if I write down the solution set, the solution set is all those values of x and y for which 4x minus y is equal to 1. This is equivalent to x and y is equal to 4x minus 1 where x belongs to r. It means that you choose any value of x that gives you a solution to this system and that's why there are infinitely many solutions. So there are few interesting questions which we can thought of from now that 
if the system is large there are thousands of equations and thousands of variables then how can we solve it we cannot draw them and solve it so which means we need a method other than that how do we, we know that there, there are unique solution or no solution or infinitely many solution and one more question is why not finitely many solutions why not five solutions hundred solution two hundred solutions so think over it we will address all these questions later on so what do you think what is common in all these equations of course all these six equations have two variables but the more important point is linearity so all of these equations are linear and therefore we can define the linear equation in n variables as follows a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus so on is equal to b where all a i's and b are real constants and solution so <clears throat> let's quickly see this question please do try to solve it by yourself and then you can see the solution so the first one is not linear because of the presence of x y the second one is not linear because of the presence of root x third one is not linear because 1 by y is there fourth one is not linear 2 raised to the power z is there 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th are linear this examples take us to a very interesting conclusion that linear equation do not contain products of the variable x y is not allowed reciprocals 1 by y is not allowed other functions sin x e raised to the power x not allowed and they occur to the first power which means x square y cube root x they are not allowed and now if you remember this remark then it's quite easy to identify that the system is the equation is linear or not the solution of a linear equation is given by n tuple or ordered n tuple which means the first value gives you the value of the first variable so x1 then x2 and so on so system of linear equation represents a finite set of linear equation each with the same variables and now the solution of the system is a solution which is satisfying all the equations simultaneously so when there were two equations and we got a unique solution which means the solution is satisfying both the equations so system of linear equation in a standard form is represented as follows if there are m equations and n unknowns where a i j and b i are real numbers so this is the notation for the real numbers we say a system is consistent if it has at least one solution and otherwise we say it is inconsistent so important terminology please do remember it also if all bi are zero we call the system as homogeneous linear system so bi means here so if b1 is equal to zero b2 is equal to zero and bm is equal to zero then we call the system as homogeneous linear system so very interesting question is every homogeneous linear system consistent what do you think so the answer is yes because 0 0 is always a solution of a homogeneous system we call it a trivial solution the other solutions are called as non-trivial solution so if you see a homogeneous system x plus y is equal to 0 2x plus 5y is equal to 0 it may have non-trivial solution but it is for sure that 0 0 if you substitute x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 then it satisfies the system so the linear system can be represented in matrix form as follows 
ax is equal to b where a is made up of coefficient matrix b they are x are variables and b are the constants on the right hand side so therefore a is called the coefficient matrix and a along with this column so there is a coefficient matrix here this is the coefficient matrix and then you add this column along with this column we call it augmented matrix so very important notation so for example for this system the augmented matrix is and 2 minus 1 1 and 9 So let's try to see how while using the augmented matrix we can solve a system of equation. So the question says write down the augmented matrix for the solution of the following system. So the solution of this system is x is equal to 3, y is equal to minus 1 and z is equal to 2. Now this itself represents a system x is equal to 3 y is equal to minus 1 and z is equal to 2 and its augmented matrix is this one now the difference between two system is the previous system here the values of x y and z are given implicitly i cannot directly by looking at it can say that what is the value of x y z but in this system, the value of x, y, z are given explicitly. It means that if I have to solve a system, then I have to reduce the original augmented matrix into a simplified augmented matrix, which directly gives me the value of x, y and z. Yes, to reduce one of the augmented matrix into the simplified one, we have to use some operations. But while using the operations, we have to keep in mind that the two systems, the two systems which are behind the augmented matrix, they should remain equivalent. Then only if we have a solution to this system, then the same solution should be there for this system. Yes, and this is what we have to study. The matrix in this simplified form would be called as rho Eklund form which we are going to define in the next class. So from here, few interesting questions that how can we define the Roachlan form? Yes, we have seen some examples based on that you can try to generalize the concept. Why we are talking of Roachlan form, not column column Eklan form? And based on the rho Eklan form, can we say something about the consistency of the solution? So give a thought to these questions so that you will be able to connect for the next lecture. Thank you very much for watching the lecture.